Welcome to Aquaponics Academy, a bright agrotech podcast designed to help you overcome common aquaponic issues, learn new growing techniques, and help you be as successful as you can be as an aquaponic practitioner. Whether you're just getting started or you've been growing aquaponically for decades, this podcast is for anyone wanting to design the best performance system possible. Join aquaponics expert, Dr. Nate Story, the creator of Zip Grow Towers, as he breaks down complex topics into easy to understand information. And now, here's Dr. Nate Story. Hi there, I'm Dr. Nate Story from Bright Agritech, and this is Aquaponics Academy episode number 20. Today I want to run over um, some of the aspects of water quality that you need to know to really run a successful system, and more importantly, that you need to know in order to go out and get all of the information you need. So um, today we're going to be talking about water quality. And uh, when we talk about water quality, we're really discussing a host of different variables. Um, we're not just talking about temperature and pH or EC or turbidity or any of these things, but we're actually talking about everything in combination, especially when we're discussing aquaponic systems or hydroponic systems. Um, most aquaponic growers just kind of assume that if you line all of the uh, all of the variables up, if you have your media and your plants and your fish and your microbes, everything just works out. And in some instances, that is absolutely true. But in many, it is not. And uh, most of the time, when it doesn't work out quite right, it oftentimes comes down to small things. Um, in the system. And almost all of these things have to do with water quality. So water quality is really, really important in our systems, not just because uh, good water quality helps us to be successful, but because water is the, is the thing that flows through the entire system. Whether you're talking about fish, you're talking about fish and water. If you're talking about plants, you're talking about plants and water. If you're talking about your microbes, again, you're talking about microbes and water. So um, let's jump into this and let's discuss some of these things, why they're important and why you should know about them. And um, then we're going to, uh, you know, I, honestly, I, I can't go into a lot of detail on everything. You're going to have to go out and do a little research yourselves, but I can at least give you an introduction, enough in to, uh, information in the time that we have to go out there and uh, discover some, some interesting things for yourself. So the first thing that's uh, really, really important to know is uh, water hardness. And a lot of people get themselves into trouble uh, with, with very hard water because they don't understand what hard water entails um, or what it means or what, what, it, you know, what it does to their system. Um, so water hardness basically describes carbonates, calcium and magnesium carbonates typically. And carbonates um, are basically a... Um, an oxidized form, uh, it, it's carbon and um, CO3, basically. So it, it, it does some interesting things in your water. It, uh, of course, when, you, when it dries up, it's kind of scaly, and it's that alkaline powder or, or white mineral that you see around faucets, that kind of thing. But in your solution, it's doing all sorts of interesting things, including something called buffering. And what buffering is, is it describes... Um, how carbonates specifically dissolve into the water and precipitate out of the water. And what they do is they kind of artificially maintain pH within a certain range. Well, I say artificially, that's not the right word. But essentially, the, the, the carbonates and their existence in your solution means that your water will trend to stay within a certain range. And so um, it's very important to understand carbonates because in most aquaponic systems, we like to run at a lower pH because it, there's more nutrients available at those, in those lower pH ranges. Um, but if you have heavy carbonates, if you have, have high carbonates, um, then oftentimes that becomes very difficult. Um, because those carbonates will keep your pH high. So it's our goal to um, keep hardness within a certain range or eliminate um, water hardness to some extent and um, to replace that um, with just constant monitoring and moderate, uh, modifying the pH, um, you know, fairly often, once a day, every couple days, instead of letting carbonates run your system and run your pH, you get to. So understanding hardness is really important. Now, hardness is usually measured in things like parts per million, um, something like that. And oftentimes, um, you can read uh, your carbonates with a TDS meter. So if you're using total dissolved solids, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, um, oftentimes you can get a good feel for your water hardness. Um, oftentimes, too, if you're 
drawing from municipal water sources, they're going to tell you. Now, I'll tell you, uh, for most folks, if you're dealing with 200 to 300 parts per million, you might want to consider getting an RO filter and filtering out um, those carbonates, filtering out um, those minerals, because they can interfere with your system in the long run. But if you're under that, you're probably okay, and you can definitely get ahead of them with nitrification. So the next thing that you need to understand is pH, and this is basically just a measure of acidity, right? So uh, the, the solution pH impacts uh, nutrient availability, it impacts you know, how happy your fish and your plants and your microbes are, and kind of the metabolism of your microbes. So you want to be careful about changing uh, the pH of your solution. But generally speaking, we're shooting for an acidity somewhere, I like to run my system between say 6.2 and 6.6, um, or 6 and 6.4, something like that. And we're looking for, um, basically, it's never going to be perfectly stable, but we want to kind of swing it through a certain range and uh, make sure that it's not going too low or too high. And uh, so, yeah, acidity uh, pH is measured. It's, uh, it's uh, basically an inverse logarithmic scale. Uh, we're measuring hydronium ions. Those are hydrogen, dissociated hydrogen ions in the solution. And um, those describe how acidic the solution is. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's how we measure acidity. And pH tests are available just about anywhere for aquariums. And uh, those of you know um, who listen to these know that we really like the API master test kit. It comes with um, nitrate, nitrite, and ammonia testing as well as pH. And that usually does a really good job at filling you in on how healthy your system is. So TDS is another measurement, total dissolved solids. Now, if you're in aquaponic systems, um, if you're doing aquaponic systems, TDS of, of your source water kind of tells you what kind of uh, carbonates and minerals you're dealing with in the source water itself. That's helpful. Um, now, as far as TDS in your system itself, um, you can use it to form kind of a benchmark to measure system nutrition, but it's not as useful in like a super hands-on management kind of way as it is in hydroponic systems. So in hydroponic systems, we measure TDS or EC, and um, they're not the same, but they're pretty close. And uh, those basically tell us, you know, how conductive the water is, how many, uh, you know, positively or negatively charged ions there are floating around in our solution. And that tells us a lot about the nutritional content of that solution. Now, um, in aquaponic systems, it's going to be much, much lower. Your, um, your EC measurement, if you're measuring EC, electrical conductivity, or your TDS measurement is going to be much lower in aquaponic systems than it is in hydroponic systems. And the reason for that is because it's an organic nutrient cycle as, a, as opposed to an inorganic one. And uh, so there's just typically a lot less ions floating around in that solution as there are in a, in a hydroponic system. But it can still be a good measurement to take. And you'll begin to notice if you take TDS measurements or um, EC measurements, you'll be able to start building a benchmark and your system should be fairly stable. So you'll be able to begin predicting certain things. You'll begin to be able to kind of understand what, what uh, your system is doing, where your plants are um, in their growth cycle, all of that by kind of keeping an eye on your TDS measurements because they can be kind of benchmarks um, for your system. So not entirely unuseful. I would recommend um, taking them, if you have a TDS meter or an EC meter, taking those measurements and logging them and kind of tying them to other things in your system. Um, higher TDS or EC measurements will typically indicate uh, more nutritional, uh, more, more nutrients available in your system if your source water is constant. Okay, so the next one is temperature. Temperature is really important in our system because it basically describes... Um, well, it, temperature is uh, impacts our system in a lot of ways. It impacts root growth. It impacts uh, microbial communities and their growth and the speed of their reactions. So nitrification, temperature directly affects the speed of nitrification. Warmer temperatures up to a point, of course, um, typically speed a lot of the mineralization and nitrification and other oxidation reactions that we, we really appreciate in aquaponic systems. So temperature is really important to note, and of course it impacts fish health. So if you're dealing with fish that prefer warmer waters and temperature is falling, that is something you want to be measuring constantly. And um, 
if you have, uh, it's, it's worth thinking about that in a lot of detail, right? Because if you say like you have a big spill and you have to top off and you've got tilapia and they really like warm water, you can always keep them in warm water, but you top off with water from the tap that's 50 degrees, you need to understand those differences and make sure you don't shock your fish. Um, similarly, you got to keep an eye on temperature um, as uh, in the spring, in the winter, in the fall, depending on kind of how you're running your system. That's a measurement you should be taking and should be understanding. And um, of course, the goal with all of these systems is to pick select species that will be really happy in our systems no matter what the... Um, basically, we'll be really happy within our systems at the temperature range that will be natural to the system, right? So we're not constantly having to adjust the temperature of the water. Um, it just kind of hits steady state, or it, it finds its range, and we find fish and plants and everything that's happy within that range. So uh, definitely take temperature measurements. Uh, dissolved oxygen is another one that not enough people take. Now, you don't need to be taking dissolved oxygen measurements. Dissolved oxygen just describes the amount of oxygen dissolved in our solution. And that's really important because it keeps our fish healthy and it keeps our microbes healthy and our entire system aerobic. It's not a huge deal in aquaponic systems, but when you do have dissolved oxygen or DO, you'll hear me refer to it as DO, um, issues in your system, it's usually... Um, it indicates there's not there's a problem, right? Not enough circulation, not enough aeration. There's something dead somewhere. There's something rotting somewhere, um, and uh, it's a great indicator of system health. So um, dissolved oxygen is typically measured in parts per million, and uh, depending on the temperature of your solution and your altitude and a whole bunch of other things, um, there's kind of an ideal range. And I'll let you go. There's tons of tables online for that, so I'll let you go dig those up. But you want to always be shooting for as much dissolved oxygen in your solution as possible. It's going to keep your system really happy. So if you can measure it, and there are DO meters out there, um, it's a great thing to measure just to kind of keep tabs on your system health. Um, the last thing is there's a bunch of kind of biological components to this, and these are measurements like turbidity, um, and they measure, you know, like the cloudiness of the water, which can describe the algae or the bacteria there. Um, there are a lot of other, uh, t you know, tint, what it was, the color of the solution. All of these things tie directly into the biology of the system, and, and just being observant and keeping an eye on your system and your system solution um, is a really, really important thing. Um, cause the biological things are harder to measure sometimes. Well, not something like turbidity. Actually, they used to just measure turbidity by taking a piece of newspaper and sinking it in the water and you measure how deep it is when you can't read it anymore. Um, which, so that's pretty easy, pretty low tech, but there's a lot of other things there that, that can be a little difficult. So my encouragement with biological measurements and components is to just keep a really good eye on your system. If you notice it's getting cloudy or there's an algae bloom or something else, that affects dissolved oxygen. Uh, temperature affects that too. Uh, pH, hardness, all of these things are tied together in some way or another. And biology tends to be the thing that ties them together. So keep an eye on the biological components of your system. And I guarantee you that pretty soon with, a, with some practice and with some observation, you're going to be really, really comfortable with looking at your system and saying, I bet I've got dis low dissolved oxygen because it is first thing in the morning. And I see we had a bit of an algae bloom creeping up on us over the last few days. And you'll begin to put things together and begin to kind of understand um, how it all works uh, with time. So remember that biology binds all of these measurements together. And so individually, they are not that helpful, but as a whole, they can be really, really useful and make sure that you have a successful system. So, um, we have done a ton of blog articles and a ton of videos on all of these different subjects in way more detail than I can go into right here. So um, if you're interested, you can read more about carbonates, dissolved oxygen, pH on the Bright Agrotech blog and watch all of our helpful videos. Um, I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. No one else puts um, such great content out there for free. So uh, definitely check those out. Um, these topics and many others on our YouTube channel. So thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of Aquaponics Academy. On behalf of everyone here at Bright Agritech, um, we hope that you'll continue to join us for future episodes as we continue to give you the best information possible on aquaponics and creating successful systems. <laughs>